Welcome back to the CES International News Stage. I'm Tom Parsons from Stuff, and I'm joined by Manrique Brenes, who's going to tell us all about Blossom. Take it away, Manrique. Thank you, Tom. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Blossom. Uh, we just launched the company. We're starting shipping uh, product at the end of the month. And uh, we're keen on solving a problem that impacts uh, many places around the world, but in particular in the US. We looked at uh, water consumption at the residential space, and we found out that roughly 50% of the water that is used today on a daily basis is used outside uh, the house, and mostly it's on the irrigation system. Unfortunately, roughly half of this water is wasted. So we see in uh, large parts of the US that are impacted by drought, a lot of waste. And that's the problem that we, we venture out to resolve. The, um, the way we, we identify the problem is fundamentally today, irrigation controllers are run on a time basis. And the problem with that is that water demand, the amount of water that our plants need, is not a function of time, it's a function of weather. So what we've mapped here is an example of that. When the blue line that you see right there, that you see going up and down every day, is the actual water consumption. The red lines there are the rainfall events. So you can see that it would be very hard for something that is on a time basis to just adjust every day. And fundamentally, what we've built is a small irrigation controller that retrofits back into the existing irrigation system. We go out, we take out the old controller, we hook up the new Blossom controller, and what we do is we hook up this controller back to a cloud-based service. Once you've connected the controller, you associate it to your account, your location, and based on that, we can gather all the relevant weather data and calculate the actual water demand on a daily basis. So, so we go back to this device on a daily basis and adjust what is the actual amount of water that is ideal for that garden. On top of looking at the weather that occurred on the last 24 hours, we also look at the forecast, at the likelihood of rainfall over the next few days. So we always manage that total profile to maximize the use of rainfall. So we may need a little bit of water tomorrow, but it's likely to rain tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So we're, we're not going to turn on the sprinklers. The beauty of the system also is that the soil itself, it's a, it's a good buffer system. We, we have 24 hours to adjust and manage the system in a way that allows us to optimize water. The numbers that we've run indicate that we can easily uh, save people more than 30% of the total water bill. That amounts in the average household in the southwestern US to around $100, $100 every three or four months, which is $300 a year. So the device pays for itself very quickly, and we also provide a ton of convenience. Um, the device has been built to fundamentally feed in, every, in any household, the majority of the households in the US, it's been built with ample connectivity, so we provide both Wi-Fi and power line to make sure that when that device is connected, it will always be on. Uh, we provide a unit that can be placed either indoors or outdoors. Uh, we provide a simple app that provides real-time connectivity and is of use for people. Traditionally, irrigation controllers tend to be very challenging. This, we provide a simple user interface that people can access from their phones. And finally, we provide it in, 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 uh, in every operating system that is, that is measured out there. Um, we do this basically with our base, based on our cloud-based service. And um, we've also built it in a way that it's going to be a consumer-based product that can be installed pretty much in every home. Um, there's just a, a brief summary of how that, that's done. The way we, we set up the device is the device comes fully built in with a power line and a power line bridge. The first thing you do is connect the power line bridge, then take all the old controller, connect the new controller with the existing wiring, plug it into the wall outlet, and you're already connected to a cloud service, ready to go. Awesome, thank you, Mariko. Uh, please come and join me. I'm gonna get one of my glamorous assistants, Stephen, uh, to just pass us the, the box at the, at the side of the stage there, um, so we can actually see what this looks like in the shops. Um, here we go, okay. So this is what you, people will actually be able to just walk into a shop and pick up. And just grab, yeah, the, the, the device comes with a um, power line bridge already Let me get that for you. attached here. So basically the first thing that people will do is take out the, the, the power line bridge, hook it up next to their router. Yep. 
connect the Ethernet cable back to the router, and then go outdoors, take the second piece of the controller that has the connectors for the existing wiring, plug the wires, and then snap that one on there, and you're ready to go. So it's all, it, the, consumer, it's, the consumer itself can do the installation. Yeah, this is, this is meant to be a, a retrofit device. It's very similar to what Nest has been doing in thermostats, which is taking a dumb device that is not aware of the environment and replacing, re replacing it with a, with a connected device that is aware of the environment. I was going to mention smart heating, smart heating actually. Um, because we've seen in the UK at least, and I'm, I'm guessing it's probably the same over here in the States, um, that a lot of uh, energy companies are encouraging their customers and providing incentives for their customers to adopt smart, smart heating solutions. Can you see the same thing going on with this in the long yes, run? Yes, in the US there is a broad-based water conservation program sponsored by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. It's called WaterSense. And in many places, the controller gets a subsidy from the water utilities which goes normally from around $75 to up to $400. So this device could essentially come free to many of our users. Excellent. Um, what was I going to say? Um, so I mean, it's obviously quite early days for you guys. You, you, you know, this, this is an early project. Um, it feels to me um, like it would have really useful applications all over the world. Are, are there grand plans to expand in the long run? Yes, the, the, uh, we're a small company. We just launched. Uh, we had a successful Kickstarter campaign, and, and we're beginning to ship the first units at the end of the month. The, the, the challenge of going outside the US initially is the fact that we need to have a reliable weather service where we can gather the data from in order to reprogram these devices on a daily basis. And right now, we have access in the US around to around 22,000 weather stations. Around the world, we, we've looked initially, we, we think we can access another 30 to 40,000. So there are many places where we're, like Australia and, and, and Europe, where we should be able to deploy the system, but it's not all over the world. Sure. Not yet. I, I think it's a, it's a, 